Hello guys, welcome back to Stock Transit. We are in the NEET PG 2021 Pathology question discussion. We are in the 16th question. And this question I would say is a mixture of both your clinical medicine as well as the pathology, right? So without any due delay, we'll just go to the question straight away, fine. So we had a question of similar lines, right? A 30 year old person came to the OPD with a history of pain in the fingers and an exposure to colder temperature, the pain was more prominent, right? On examination, there's a suspicion of autoimmune etiology. See, when I look at this thing, just with the history, I know it's a Raynaud's phenomenon, right? That's a classical description of Raynaud's phenomenon. But the etiology of Raynaud's phenomenon, if you look at Harrison, it's like an entire page. Many, many, many things can cause Raynaud. We have primary, secondary Raynaud's, there are lots of drugs and everything. Here, the question itself says that they are suspecting an autoimmune etiology. So when I come to rheumatological diseases, again, there's an N number of things which can cause Raynaud's phenomenon. And all the four options, unfortunately, will cause Raynaud's phenomenon. So when I know only the clinical examination, these are my differential diagnosis, right? So that's the reason you have to go with a lab diagnosis of an ANA testing. At the same time, I'll talk about ANA testing as well, right? So when an ANA testing is done, it's said that there's a significant titer and the nuclear pattern of ANA was found. So that gives me, the clinches me the diagnosis. I have a pattern of ANA and I have a history, history, only one history. So when I'm going to combine both of them, I can come to an easy diagnosis. And the diagnosis here is pretty forward. It's your systemic sclerosis, right? We look at why both are required, why the next PG, if like it's proposed to happen, whatever they are proposed, will be the best way because that's how medicine is being practiced outside. From a student's point of view, it might look a little bit difficult, but that's how it happens in the real life, right? So I'm going to have a clinical examination, probable differential diagnosis. The clinician is going to order whatever pathological test or the microbiological or biochemical test he wants based on the history. Then the pathologist is going to contribute or the microbials or the uh, biochemist or whatever it is, right? Or the radiologist is going to give the inputs and then there'll be a correlation and then a diagnosis is going to be done, right? The reason why clinical medicine alone can't be the role is this is the problem. I have all these things. See, these are all the cause of uh, your Raynaud's phenomenon from and rheumatology textbooks. Systemic sclerosis, mixed connective tissue disorder, SLE, Jogren's, dermatomycetes, rheumatoid arthritis. That's why I said all the four options can cause Raynaud's. Not only that, look at that. Drugs, endocrine problem, trauma, arterial disease, everything. So the question has made it simple for us by saying that autoimmune etiology was found out. But if you're going to evaluate a, clin a patient of Raynaud's phenomenon, you have to consider hypothyroidism also because that's much more common than my autoimmune disorder, right? Drugs, again, much more common. So I had to rule out everything, then whoever was the person who was creating the question for us has narrowed down to this. Then they did an ANA. The problem with ANA is also there, right? Because it, a pathology alone cannot give the diagnosis. That's why the integration is the key. Look at this, this is a pattern of ANA. We're gonna have five different patterns of auto, your ANA. So anti-nuclear antibodies, this is one pattern. Here, this I call it an homogeneous pattern. See, all these cells, all these round, 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 green, green things are the cells here, right? These are the cells here. So the entire cell is green in color. Just for an understanding, green color is positivity in ANA. If the entire cell is green in color, I'm going to call it a homogeneous pattern. My problem in homogeneous pattern is it can be have uh, the antibody can be against a double standard DNA, can be against a nucleosome, can be against a histone. And one of the probable diagnoses is SLA. So by looking at a pattern in my uh, your anti-nuclear antibody testing, I cannot say it is SLA. Could be SLA. Could be anything against the nucleosome as well, antibodies against nucleosome. That's why I need a history and this pattern will come. That was the significant titer. We will talk about titer's importance maybe sometimes down the road because titer is very, very important and interpretation of the titer makes the diagnosis perfect because very low titer, I'm not going to consider it positive. That's very, very important while interpreting ANA. We'll see that soon, fine? Or you will understand about them when you go to your MD or MS, fine? So here, this alone again can't give me a diagnosis. Again, I have a differential diagnosis, that's all, fine? The second pattern I'm going to call speckled pattern. This is the same cell, right? Whatever cell we saw, I'm having the same cell here. But am I right in saying that? See, not the uh, round round things. You can, can you see the cell where you have the green dots, tiny, tiny, tiny dots? It's like a speckle, right? It's not uniform, it's speckled. So speckle pattern, I have two possibilities. It can be a ribonucleoprotein or a Smith antigen. Again, I have a differential diagnosis only. So when I have a perfect answer with the clinical history, I can come to a diagnosis. That's my second pattern of immunofluorescence. Third pattern is a very interesting one. Look at this. This is a cell again for me, an individual cell for me. So this cell, I don't have the cell's architecture because it's not highlighting many things. It's having multiple dots. Then if we can count that, you will have classically 46 dots. 
because it is centromere. Each dot determines a centromere. So I'm going to call this in centromeric pattern. Again, I have a differential diagnosis here. Either it could be systemic sclerosis or a Jokerin syndrome, right? I do have a thing. What our question said was, it was a nucleolar pattern. Actually, when I look at this question back, the word nucleolar pattern alone is enough for me for diagnosis because nuclear pattern can be seen in only one disease, systemic sclerosis. That's the reason that, at least in this question, the importance of the pattern is more than the clinical history of Raynaud's. Because Raynaud's can be present anywhere, nuclear pattern is considered only one. Even if I don't have the history, if it is a nuclear pattern, again, this is my entire cell. I'm just drawing an yellow color for an outline for understanding. The entire cell, there's only one tiny dot positive, that's nuclear. And nuclear pattern you see in an ANA, with a significant titer, and definitely going to call it systemic sclerosis. I don't want a history only for this pattern. For rest of all the pattern, I require a history and correlation is must. This is a pattern when I need not have a correlation because nuclear pattern almost always equal to SL, your systemic sclerosis, right? The answer for this patient is clear cut systemic sclerosis, right? The last pattern here is my rim pattern. Here, when you look at this cell, am I right in saying that the corners of the cell alone is very darkly heightened yes actually those are all, all the nuclei the cytoplasm is lost here the every nuclei the corner of the nuclei is very very uh, brighter right so this is called a rim pattern rim pattern can be seen in your double standard dna and also it's in the corner of the nuclei right so my nuclear envelope protein and can also have the rim pattern fine again I have differential diagnosis only for rim pattern fine great so what we saw is a perfect question which uh, equal balance of the clinical information and the laboratory thing so undoubtedly i would require inputs from the clinical side from the patient examination side as well as from the microscopy or the laboratory or any test so that i can come to a perfect definitive diagnosis thankfully the diagnosis was asked here if the management is asked the examiner wants you to do the diagnosis right mentally come to the diagnosis then something related to the diagnosis a question can be asked that also can be happening in future right thank you for your time this was a very good question setup hopefully in future we will try to test ourselves in this basis Rather than going with most comments and more theoretical stuff, this will make our memory brain cells work a bit more and we'll have more clarity and understanding of the concept and applying of the concept. It's just application, it's not just understanding, right? Hopefully the next pattern or the proposed whatever it is will make our exam much more better and good for us, right? Okay, do download the Academy app and we have your initial preparation starting and we are going to create lots of free content for you in the form of special classes. We'll evaluate more and more cases and then we'll come to a conclusion, fine? If there's any errors in the recall like age, gender, anything, just do comment so that I can define it and I can give the best possible outcome for you or for your junior batches, fine? Thank you for your time. See you soon. Till then, bye-bye from Dr. Anjit. Bye-bye.